Hi guys, Annabelle here from Horizon Cosplay, and you might notice that once again I am in my 90s attire. What are we making today? Well, we're making this. This is a vintage panel that I recently found in a charity shop. For the cutest 90s circle skirt ever, I mean just look at that pattern. So essentially this skirt comes in several sizes and I should just be able to cut out the pieces. The instructions are printed on the fabric and if you guys are wondering, it is part of a collection called Clothes Kits. And this is number 504, sizes 8 to 18. I am gonna have some fun with this one, guys. So, I've just laid the fabric out just to get a photo of it before I start cutting, and I suddenly realised we actually have two panels here. So I've got two skirts, except it's also not a skirt, because if you look over here, where the kitten is sitting, this says it's a sun top, which I think means that this is supposed to be a dress. There's some facing here, I'm not really sure what that's for. Also, this bit over here is labelled to be a buttonhole strip. You've got another side of the sun top, and then the waistband. Now, I was under the impression this was all just one thing, so we cut it in half down the middle there. We've only got one side to work with, and I think this would make a dress, but I'm not really sure. I've got to be honest, I kind of do just want to stick with my plan as having this as a skirt, but I figure there's no harm in cutting all the pieces out, pinning it together, and seeing what it looks like and maybe we can make it into a dress, but I'm not sure. I feel like a dress in this pattern might be a bit much, whereas a skirt that I can pair with a plain top would actually be really nice. Either way, let's cut this out. Because these panels had been folded up for god knows how long, I gave it a very good iron. This is also the point where I realised how thin and kind of see-through this fabric is, so that might need to be adjusted for later on. Well, this made me laugh just a little bit. It says, please read instructions carefully before cutting out. And you know what there definitely isn't on this panel or these two panels? Any damn instructions! I then got to cutting out. To start with, I decided to just cut out one panel. Why? Well, because I wanted to pin this dress together to see what it looked like, just in case I actually wanted to change this project and make it a dress rather than the skirt that I had been dreaming of for weeks. Okay, so this is what the dress should look like, and I can't do a spin to show you guys what it would look like, because even though this is supposed to be a size 18, because I cut out the largest size possible, and bloody good thing I did, it doesn't actually close around the back. <laughs> oh, alright, so things I don't like about it. Firstly, the high waist just doesn't suit me, I really don't like it. My natural waistline is about here, and as you can see, the waistband ends a good couple inches above that. The boobs are big, but again, that can be adjusted, it isn't the end of the world. But the skirt, I mean, it's a good thing I do have two panels, otherwise I would have to be adding something to the skirt to make it bigger essentially <laughs> because the app on my back is essentially this big like it's nearly a foot wide it essentially just curves around my hips and I'm very grateful for that because that means I can pin it to my knickers so that I can stand here and talk to you all essentially though my decision is let's cut out the other panel and let's make the skirt that I was always planning to and as for the dress pieces well I'm pretty sure we'll find some kind of use for them so I began cutting out the other panel, making sure to cut every piece, even those that I'm not using, so that I can put them aside and save them for another project later on. But before I began pinning my skirt together, I decided to use the panel to cut out the skirt shapes again from an old white bed sheet I had. Though of course it had to be ironed first, this is because I'm hoping that this second layer will act a bit like a petticoat. I'm even adding ruffles to the bottom to help give the whole skirt a much better shape. Once that was done, we pinned all the panels wrong sides facing before giving them an overlock along those raw seams. I then flipped the skirt over, gave those seams an iron so they were right sides facing and pinned them in place. Another stitch later and we had all the skirt panels attached. Oh, and we did the same for the ruffles on the underskirt. For the top half, I just cut it in one big piece. Why? Well, because the less seams I need to sew, the easier this project is going to be. I then pinned up a rolled hem for the ruffle and this was the moment I thought I might have cut the ruffle a little too short, but meh, I don't have loads of fabric and there's not a lot I can do about it now, but maybe later on I can top stitch some lace on the bottom or something if it looks like the skirt needs it. Once it was all pinned up, I used a zigzag stitch to seal it down. Why do I always use a zigzag stitch for rolled hems? Honestly, I have got no idea, but it works and it looks good, so please don't judge. And then there was just a gathering stitch to do at the top of the ruffle, the petticoat top and the skirt top. Well, this is looking absolutely fantastic. And I have to admit, while I have been making this, I've actually been binge watching Young Sheldon and I can't help feel this is something his mum would totally wear, which probably an odd observation, but we're just gonna roll with it. So yes, very, very nice, perfect shape. Definitely please, I've got all four panels. Two would not have been enough. Three would have been okay. 
four gives me the perfect amount of floaty puffy stuff that I am looking for. But before we attach all the panels to the waistband, I think we need to attach the ruffles to the underskirt and let's do that. So I got on with pinning on the ruffle before giving it a stitch and then an overlock to attach it to the petticoat layer. And of course I caught a bunch of fabric that I didn't need to and so had to unpick sections of it and then re-sew them the next day. But then the ruffle was finally on and just look at that skirt movement, oh my gosh I love it. I've also decided that this skirt is more of an A-line shape rather than the original circle that I thought it was, however I do like it all the same. Next I took both button facings and the petticoat to pin to the open side of the skirt. Now I'd been thinking about how I wanted this skirt to do up and though I was still wanting an elasticated waist, I also wanted to add in some decorative buttons and poppers. So I had concluded that having a visible line down the centre front to help those buttons stand out would look rather nice. We then got to making those two seams French once more and I was so excited that it was finally looking like a skirt. I then got a bit annoyed at how thick the French seams were and how they were sticking out to the inside so I made the executive decision to iron them flat and then top stitch them down. This actually gave a really nice effect so definitely no regrets. So I've just gone through my button stash and essentially these are the only two buttons that I have enough of to go down the front of the skirt. So we have a nice kind of shiny glittery one. I'm not normally a fan of glittery buttons but I actually think this goes quite well. And then the other one we have is this kind of metal one. I do believe this is real metal, it does feel like that. And again, I do feel this one goes quite well but I'm just not sure it's the right effect. However, right now I'm just trying to decide which button I want on my skirt, which is a bit of a hard decision, so I'm going to ask the Discord. And if you guys want to join the Discord to help me with these decisions, please do click the link that is in the video description. We've got quite the little community going and I would love for you to join if you haven't already. But now, to attach the waistband. For the waistband, I began pinning it and then the cat made me laugh so much that I just had to share. Lily, what are you doing? Honestly, I take a box out of my shelves for one second and all of a sudden the cat moves in. Is that just where you live now? We then carried on pinning the waistband to the skirt. I had run a gathering stitch along the top blue layer as well, but as it was going to be elasticated, I decided not to use it and instead just slightly gathered the underskirt, which is a little bit larger than the top layer. Oh, and I'm actually lying when I say that too, I actually put a small box pleat under each side seam for the underskirt because I was too lazy to gather it. I then sat down and pinned the waistband onto the underside before deciding that I hated how it was pinned and removed all of them and turned on my iron to press the folds and the seams. This looked way better and so I top stitched it down and then ran another top stitch along the top of the waistband to make it the perfect width of the elastic. Next I measured the elastic around my waist before pinning a bobby pin to it and passing it through the waistband. The ends of the elastic were then pinned in place and top stitched down. Then I sat down to attach the hook and eye I wanted at the waistband. This honestly turned out a bit messier than I would have liked, but I'm arguing that no one but me is going to see it and it works, so why fix it? So decision for the buttons is in and we are gonna go for the sparkly ones. Now with these, I've just counted them out and I have exactly 41, which is way more than we need. So what I'm gonna do is I've pinned up the front of the skirt here and I'm actually not going to make it button up all the way down. So I think we're going to go about halfway down. And from here on out, I'm just going to sew the buttons straight through both layers so that the bottom bit is attached. And that means that I can hem this bit in one go. So essentially my plan here, as you can see, they're slightly uneven. All the panels, for some reason, were just slightly longer on one side. Don't ask me why, really got no idea. But we're just going to go along and do a rolled hem at the base. And then once the rolled hem is complete, we are going to attach the buttons. Or maybe we'll attach the buttons first. I'll decide that after I've had dinner. So I'm trying to pin the skirt, but now I can't move it because someone's made a nest and is sleeping on it, aren't they, Sherlock? Are you comfortable? You happy sleeping on my projects? Yeah, I thought so. Sherlock's being adorably, um, Nah, annoying is probably not the right word. So I began pinning up the hem and when it was finally done, I was ready to stitch it. Really, Lily Cat? I was gonna stitch my petticoat, but I can't if you're sleeping on top of the machine. So happy. <laughs> Luckily, she moved soon enough, and just as I was getting worried I would have to hem it tomorrow, we were able to top stitch around it tonight. And with that, I was off for a good night's sleep. The next day, there was only one thing left to do sewing on the buttons. First off, we had to figure out how many buttons we wanted. My personal rule of thumb is that I like one about every five centimeters. So starting from the top, I marked halfway down with pins before just stitching the buttons on the bottom half on through the two sides of the skirt to keep it together. Then we got out the poppers. 
I found these vintage poppers when I brought a whole sewing box of just random stuff from a charity shop a few years ago and they have come in very very handy since. Though sadly this is my last packet so I suppose I'll have to refresh my stash sometime soon. I then sat down and spent my afternoon slowly sewing them on while relaxing in front of some nice YouTube sewing videos. If you like relaxing in front of YouTube sewing videos I would also suggest that you subscribe to my channel while you're here so that you don't miss my weekly Wednesday uploads. So technically the skirt is now finished, however the first two buttons where I attach the poppers the overlay just doesn't quite line up how I'd like it to and I don't know what's happened to me but apparently this now bugs me enough that I'm going to have to redo the poppers and luckily I shouldn't have to redo the top ones, it should only be the bottom ones that need unpicking but let's quickly unpick those and get on with redoing them because of course I, I can't just accept that it's a little bit imperfect, I have to make it work. Oy. So I sat down and unpicked then re-sewed the poppers. In hindsight the placket I think it is is a little small as nearly all the bottom poppers are right on the edge but if it works it works. So though it's a lesson I'll keep in mind for next time I don't think it's anything I need to actually fix today. And once that was done there was only one thing left to do, go for a lovely walk in the countryside. It was at this point that I realised that I looked just like a 90s Thumbelina which I swear was a wholly unintentional coincidence but at the same time I absolutely love it. Adding the underskirt with the ruffle to give it shape was a definite improvement to how the skirt would have sat otherwise and also the reason most of this footage is from my living room is because we tried going outside and it, it was not happening. It started raining, it was cold and honestly I was just too tired to bother with it. <laughs> but the point is I think this project definitely counts as a success and it's certainly something that I have worn a lot since I finished making this skirt, oh I don't know, about a month ago now and it has been a regular wardrobe staple ever since. And it is at this point guys that I realise I have somehow forgot to film an outro to this so my apologies but if you enjoyed this video do hit that like button, subscribe to see more history bounding cosplay and vintage sewing machine content I post every Wednesday and if you want to join our little community the link to the discord is down below. Also if you guys did feel like supporting the channel and my many many projects I also do have a ko-fi where you can buy me a coffee, download free sewing patterns or buy some of the ones that are a little bit more complicated and took me a while to make. Otherwise guys have a beautiful day and I will see you next Wednesday. Bye!